Hi, I'm Larry Salibra, a core contributor at Blockstack. Today we are going to show you how to create a single page JavaScript to-do list app that runs locally, stores its data on repurposed cloud storage, where you'll get to see your to-dos added and updated in your own personal storage, and allows for sign-in with your blockchain ID. This tutorial assumes you've downloaded the developer recent block stack, created a profile and identity, and connected cloud storage as part of the onboarding process. You can do this by visiting blockstack.org slash install, or find the link for that in the description below, along with all the other links used in this tutorial. You'll also find time codes in the description that will allow you to skip around this video. Today, we've chosen Hero Protagonist as our name. The first step is to download the Blockstack to-do list source code from GitHub onto your local computer. So first we go, to, we go to the GitHub repository and we copy the URL to clone it to our computer. Next, we open up Terminal and we type git clone and paste in the URL to the Blockstack to-dos repository. The copy of the source code is checked out on our computer. The next step is to enter into the directory that we just checked out from GitHub and to run yarn install to install the required dependencies for the app. Uh, this particular app is written in Vue.js but you're more than welcome to use any language or technology to build Blockstack apps. Now that we've installed dependencies, let's start running the server on our local computer. Okay, so now we've started the, the CDU app. It's running on localhost. As you can see, it's a very simple app. Right now, all we see is a sign in with Blockstack button. Okay, so the, the first step here is to sign in with Blockstack. It's important to understand that this, this app, while it's running on localhost, is not does not have any servers. It is a single page JavaScript app that's running entirely in your browser. It doesn't connect to any external servers or use any third party APIs. You're not relying on any third parties like Google or Facebook to vouch for your identity. You're signing in as your own individual as you're clicking the sign in with Blockstack button, an ephemeral key is generated within the app. This key, which is just used for this particular instance running on your local host computer, is used to sign a sign in request. It's also used to generate a public key, which is sent to the Blockstack browser and is used by the Blockstack browser to encrypt data coming back to you. This data will include a set of access credentials that let this app store data in your personal Blockstack storage in your repurposed cloud storage provider or local server. Let's click the sign in with Blockstack button and get started. But as you can see, we've been redirected back to our Blockstack browser and we're presented with a request asking us to approve the sign in that the Zoo app is requesting. If you'll notice here in your address bar, there's a bunch of characters at the end of the URL. These characters are a JSON web token that is the authentication request that's been signed by your instance of the Blockstack to do app. This authentication request is based on JSON web token technology with slight modifications to support the curves used by the underlying blockchain. You can use off the shelf tools to get, take a look inside what's stored there. I've now copied the authentication request into my clipboard. I'm going to paste it into a website that lets you decode these tokens. As you can see here on the right, in purple, we have the, the payload information for this authentication request. There's information such as the time it was issued, when it expires, the public keys for the instance of the app that you're running, the domain name your app is running on, a manifest file which describes your app's characteristics and is compatible with the progressive web standard. And also the place to which your user will be redirected once they decide to approve the authentication request of this app. Here at the bottom, you'll see a, an object called scopes. 
this is an array of permissions for data storage. So what this is doing is it's asking, it's asking the user to approve the ability for this app, this instance of the app, to write to their block stack storage. This particular key, ISS, which is the issuer key and value, is interesting to look at. You'll see here that it's a, a decentralized identifier. And it's a, it's a, this particular identifier is a Bitcoin address. This identifier is used to uniquely identify you along with your name to the application. Up here at the top, you see that we're using a, a custom algorithm, ES256K. This is the algorithm used by our current underlying blockchain, Bitcoin. It's important to understand that the signature on these tokens uh, is not compatible with many um, off-the-shelf JSON web token tools. Um, so it will show up as an invalid signature. But if you use the, the libraries that we offer on the Blockstack uh, GitHub repository, you'll be able to work with these very easily. Okay, so going back to the browser, we're presented with a sign-in request. What we're going to do is we're going to click Approve um, to approve the sign-in request. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going to happen. So what happens when you approve a sign-in request um, are a couple steps. First of all, your request in the browser is sent to your local core, Blockstack core API endpoint. This endpoint generates a session token, uh, which is returned back to the browser and then eventually sent on to the instance of the app that you're trying to sign into. This core session token is what the app will use to read and write files to the user's block stack storage. So after, after the core session token um, is generated by the user's local block stack core API endpoint, it's returned to the browser and a authentication response is generated, which is in a similar format to the authentic authentication request that we looked at earlier. Inside this response, in addition to the core session token, is a private key, which is intended only for this app. This private key is used by the app to encrypt data that it would like to prevent other people from viewing. So now let's click the approve button to approve the authentication request. Once we click approve, we're sent back to the block stack to do app. As you can see, we're already logged in. I'm now going to make a list of, of apps I'd like to see built on block stack. As I enter these to do's, they're going to be stored via block stack's Gaia storage layer uh, on my Dropbox. As I mentioned, this tutorial assumes you've already set up cloud storage when you installed the developer Reese of Blockstack. Later on in this video, I'll show you how we're handling storage for this app. App number one, Dece decentralized Twitter. App number two, build readable torrents with human readable names. App number three, software package manager secured by the blockchain. Okay, now we're going to go to Dropbox to show you where these to-dos were stored. Okay, now that we're in Dropbox, let's take a look at our apps folder. Inside our apps folder, we have a block stack folder. Block stack folder is where all of our storage, um, our, the block stack folders where all of our data that's stored via block stacks Gaia storage layer remains. As you can see now, we have, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of files with unintelligible names here in our Dropbox. You can see a couple of, a couple, a couple of these files were just modified, uh, about a minute ago. These are the files that store the to do items that we just added. Okay, let's take a look at one of these. So we're going to download this file and open it up. Okay, so now we've we've opened up um, we've opened up the file on our on our Blockstack Gaia storage, and now we can take a look at the contents. Inside the file, you'll see there's a JSON object. And it is, are the three to-do items that we entered on the app. You can see we have 
mutable torrents with immutable names, which we haven't completed. Software package managers here by the blockchain still haven't completed and decentralized Twitter. Now what I'm going to do is go back to my Dropbox and see where these to-dos got added and completed. Now we're going to download file and look at the, the where the to-do list was saved and the items were completed. So here we can see we have our four to-do items, block stack to-do, mutable torrents with human readable names, software package manager secured by the blockchain, and decentralized Twitter. You can see that I've completed the task of completing a building block stack to-do. Let's compare it to the other tasks, which I haven't completed, mutable torrents with human readable names has not been completed. Neither has the software package manager secured by the blockchain or a decentralized Twitter. Okay, now we're gonna take a look under the hood and show you how the block stack to-do app works. We're going to show you how sign-in works and how the to-do lists items were read and stored in Blockstack's Gaia storage. First, we're going to take a look at how, how sign-in is completed. For those of you not familiar, we're taking a look at um, a view.js component. All right, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at, um, at how you sign in with Blockstack. Because this is a view.js app, the sign-in code is in two different places. In many apps, this would only be in one place. First, let's take a look at where the sign in button lives. Signing with Blockstack is really easy. It takes one line of code. As you can see right here, it's as simple as writing Blockstack dot redirect to sign in. When the user clicks this button, what happens is the authentication request is generated and the user is redirected to their Blockstack browser to approve the login. Once a user approves a login, and the authentication response is generated and sent back to the app. Your app has to handle that login and log in the user. That happens in this particular app in a separate view.js component called app.view. Handling the authentication response is very simple. It requires only a few lines of code. The important lines to look at in this example are these lines. You can see what happens is that we first of all check whether or not a user is signed in by running the function blockstack.isUserSignedIn. signed in. This function will return true if the user has already been signed in. Um, in this case, we can load the user's profile data. And we can store this to the view.js user object. First of all, what we want to do is we want to check whether or not the user is already signed in. We do that by calling the function blockstack.isUserSignedIn. This function returns true if the user has already been signed in. Um, if the user is signed in, we can load the user data, including their profile, and use it as we see fit. If the user is not signed in, we check whether or not sign-in is pending by calling the function blockstack.isSignedInPending. Sign-in pending means that an authentication response has been sent back to the app, but has not yet been processed by the app to log the user in. If a sign-in is pending, we call the function blockstack.handlePendingSignIn, which processes the authentication response, configures the storage for the app, and then stores the user data so the user can be logged in. Next, we're going to take a look at how we store data with Blockstack. Uh, including in this particular app, how we store the to-do list items. 
to our user's uh, provisioned cloud storage provider or local server. In this particular app, it's in the dashboard file. So we're going to scroll down to the relevant lines here. Okay, there are, there are two things that happen in uh, in this uh, Blockstack to dos app. Um, we store updated uh, to do list JSON object into the Blockstack Gaia storage when we change the to dos. By changing the to dos, I mean we add a to do, remove a to do, or complete a to do list item. That happens here in this particular handler. You can see that the to do list uh, JSON object is passed in. And then using the blockstack.put file function, we put that file, uh, we, put, we put the string version of that JSON object into the, the particular storage file in the user's data storage. You can see this constant for storage file is defined here ab above to be to do's.json. That's the file name that you store in this app's data store. Okay, moving on, the second thing we need to do in this app is to read the to-do list uh, data from the Blockstack Gaia storage. That happens here in the fetch data function. You can see we use the blockstack.get file function to read the to-do's.json file from the user's Blockstack storage. This particular function returns a promise. You can see in the, in the promise handler, we process the text of the um, to-do list, and we convert that text back into the JSON object, and then we process the, the to-do list item so that it can be displayed in the app. Finally, once we've, we're done reading and writing our to-do list, users want to be able to sign out of the app, and they do that here by calling the blockstack.signuserout function, and they provide an address to which they'd like the user redirected after they sign out, and we're done. There are a couple takeaways from this app. You build a to-do list that has the ability to log someone in without using any third-party services, servers, or databases. The data can be stored in places that users themselves control. The implications of this are that you are not responsible for any of the data that users store. You don't have to make sure it's, it stays online or stays safe. Your app can scale from one to a billion users without any additional costs from infrastructure. Please click the like button below if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more tutorials and let us know what you'd like to see next in the comments. If you have any questions or issues with this tutorial, please leave a report as a GitHub issue on the Blockstack-Todos GitHub repository. See the link in the description. We can't wait to see what you're going to build. Be sure to share what you're working on with us in the comments below or on Twitter at BlockStackORG. I'm Larry Salibra. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.